Hi everyone, it's Nick from finance.vote and in this session I'm going to go through a really important topic in crypto which is how to do your own research. So in this episode of Decoding DeFi I'm going to be going through the just important guidelines, some ideas on how to research crypto projects and how to avoid getting robbed. So why do your own research? Well, it seems pretty obvious, but you should probably try and understand the technologies that you're investing in before you go and put your money into them. A lot of people don't do this un unbelievably, but it's a really important skill to learn, and it is a skill. Um, if you don't do it, you're very, very likely to lose a lot of money. You, you're going to get rugged, your investments are going to go to zero, and you become a bag holder, which means you're just stuck holding these tokens uh, waiting for this token come back to life. It's probably not going to happen. So doing your own research, super important part of the, the sort of process of investing into cryptocurrencies. Um, but I'm going to go right to the top here. What, what is research? So the sort of definition of it is it's a process, right? It's a process that you need to learn how to do. It's systematic, which means that you go in with the intent of investigating something and you do it in a very systematic fashion. You do it in a kind of routine way. Um, you'll start very structured and over time you build up a kind of instinct for these things. So eventually you'll get to the point where you can spot a shitcoin at 20 paces. But to start with, you want to follow some clear guidelines, some clear rules, go through some processes. And really it's the process of critical evaluation. So this is that you're going to take a look at something, not take anything as, as, the, as you're reading it. You're going to get deep into understanding the system, go a little bit further than the surface. And quite, quite often, you don't really need to go that far at all in crypto. So you don't need to have that much critical evaluative skills to be able to spot shitcoin. Um, but the reality of it is, is that the more you do this, the more you understand about crypto, the more you understand the fundamentals, the better at this you become and the less likely you'll get to the point where you're losing money. So why does it do your own research? Well, why, is it, why do you have to do it on your own? Um, well, in crypto, you, you really can't trust anyone. You're, you're on your own. And so this is a key part of the of the space, right? That although the technologies are trustless, um, you know, this means that we're meant to not be able to trust each other. Um, I mean, they're designed so that you don't have to. But the reality of it is that people do trust other people. And that's where you go wrong in crypto. So don't trust anyone. Recognize that the crypto space is the Wild West. Um, and understand that, you know, if an influencer or something, somebody like that on Twitter is showing you a moonshot and saying this is going to go to the moon, you should buy it, it's almost certain that the opposite is going to happen and you're going to get dumped on. So that's, that's the principle of do your own research um, and kind of ironically be very wary of someone who tells you to do your own research. So have a look at this token, DYOR, tends to be a very, very much of a red flag. So before we go into sort of some processes, I want to go through the, you know, how can things go wrong? What are you, what are you looking for? So the various flavors of rugs that you might find in the space. The classic rug pull. Um, so this is basically, okay, people put money into a pot in the case of, you know, this is very much the case with uh, Uniswap now. So we used to have to go and provide liquidity on exchanges and they just tend to die by getting really illiquid there's a point where no one can really make a trade, the spreads are super high, and the market just sort of grinds to a halt. Not the case in Uniswap, because um, there's always a trade available, because you're buying from essentially from a bonding curve. And, and how this works is people put tokens in for both sides of the market, so they'll put some Ether in, they'll put some of the whatever the paired token is, uh, and then they wait for people to go and buy those tokens from that pot. So they're putting more Ether in, taking more tokens out. And essentially, the, the person who's set this thing up holds the LP tokens. So at any point, they can pull the rug, take out the LP tokens, 
um, and and it's game over. And that's the classic rug pull. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to even be the the person holding the LP token. So the LP tokens locked thing, it doesn't necessarily mean that they can't completely rug the token because they might be holding a huge amount of the token supply and all they need to do is sell that token into the market quickly as possible and they can take have exactly the same effect. So that's the classic rug pull. Um, I think there's other kinds. Um, what I like to think of as the slow rug. So this is a kind of token scheme that's been set up that um, encourages people to put money in over a long period of time. It's not this kind of like yank rug pull, rug pull thing. It's it's a slow bleed. Money's put in over time, and essentially over they just kind of slowly siphon the money out. So. This is certainly happening on some of these big dog tokens at the moment, and certainly a lot of the moon tokens. Um, they keep essentially spending money on marketing the token, getting new buyers in, and then just keep taking the money out um, by selling the tokens into the market. And this typically works when there's a gigantic asymmetric token distribution. So if uh, internal team members are holding 95% of the token supply, 89% of the token supply, and so on. Um, and tends to be this comes with this kind of like huge coordinated marketing effort. This is not an easy thing to do. Um, and, you know, it tends to come with, you know, big influencers being paid, um, Twitter astroturfing campaigns, which is when if you go and look at the... Um, look at the, the the accounts shilling this, you can see that they were created around the same time as the scheme and um, they only post about that thing. It's not organic. It's They're clearly, they're basically engineered uh, accounts. So feed new users in, take money out. Uh, what I call the sly rug. Um, and this is, this is getting increasingly common as things have got a bit challenging in the last month in the in the markets. Uh, and this is when people say, oh dear, we've been hacked, um, all the money's gone, uh, we're sorry. Um, and quite a lot of the time, this is the internal team who've done this. It's very hard to tell pseudonymous accounts. Um, there was one recently where someone said, hey, we're just unlocking the uh, early investors. And that just basically giving permission to the early investors to take the money out of the market. Um, so this is basically, you know, it's... It's not even it's not as honest as a rug pull, um, and it's basically someone just saying, "Okay, sorry, it's all gone wrong," um, but in reality, it's the internal team that is doing this, and you'll spot quite a few of these um, certainly over the next few months. Um, not quite classic rug pull, but the the pump and dump scheme. So this is this is something to watch out for. You do not want to be buying tokens that are hitting the market that are part of a pump and dump. Uh, this is the easiest way to get wrecked in crypto. Um, there's always asymmetry in markets, right? So whoever holds the largest amount of tokens, um, they control the market. So when it comes down to big projects where you know huge amounts of the token supply are controlled by early investors, um, then it's basically a pump and dump. So this is manipulating the market. It doesn't need to happen on listing. Actually, the classic was that this would happen on kind of lower liquid tokens. People would accumulate them slowly. Then they'd let some people in, then let some more people in, then they let the crowd in. And essentially what's happening is the insiders are exiting um, before you. You do not want to be on the wrong side of that game. So really, I'd say just avoid buying tokens on listing. Um, but this is particularly problematic in AMMs. So it's very easy to ramp a token to extremely high valuations very quickly, which drags in more investors by simply just providing not much depth in the market. So not providing much liquidity, but high demand. And that drives the token's price up very, very quickly, which drags new people in, and then the insiders dump. You don't want to be on that side of it. And then there's just the classic exploits that happen in crypto all the time. So this is not a rug pull. I think this is some, something slightly different, but it is a way to lose all your money very quickly. Um, and that's because smart contracts, they're buggy. There's, they've generally got very large attack surface on them. 
they're fragile things and um, it doesn't take much at all to get these things wrong. So common exploits, classic what are called oracle manipulation, which is when um, people use flash loans and things like that to basically trick the system into thinking that the prices are different and that allows them to extract value from the system. Uh, compromise keys, it happens all the time. Some projects still use just MetaMask um, and storing their keys in the browser, which is just insane. Um, but yeah, it does happen. It's holding private keys. They can be lost quite simply by by Trojan horse viruses on the computer and things like that. So it does happen. Governance attacks are going to become more and more common as we try to decentralize our private keys. And that means basically someone accumulating a load of tokens out of the market, for example, and swing in a vote which allows them to mint tokens and and this is with DAOs in particular that are, are trying to be very very de decentralized before they're ready so watch out for that um, inflation bugs this is a common one if there's minting keys it's the same as losing a private key basically unless unless there's um, there's functions remaining in the smart contracts that allows to um, allows the exploiter to mint new tokens now, minting tokens is very common in bridges. It's very common in many, many systems. It doesn't necessarily mean that the project is a rug. Uh, minting tokens is a legitimate thing to do in many cases. Um, but a common one is mint a trillion tokens, dump them in the market. And uh, re-entrancy, this, this is how the original DAO was compromised and, and something like 5% of all Ether was lost in this thing, which made them fork the chain. Uh, and that's when a... A smart contract, um, which is like a malicious smart contract, interacts with another contract and, and um, this contract doesn't understand this one. And it's a way for attackers to, to manipulate the way contracts work. So really, the only way to thoroughly do your own research is to actually go into the contracts and understand what they're doing. Now, I can't do this. I, I can read smart contracts and um, but novel smart contracts that I haven't been involved in the development on I would not be able to spot an exploit that was coming in fact if you could you could earn a lot of money by exploiting them yourself but um, in reality you're at you as a user um, are not going to be able to fully understand the smart contracts and and see if there's any exploits in them before you put your money in so what we want to do is start to, to look a little bit wider than that, try and understand, um, uh, to smell the kind of um, the fishiness of some of these projects before you put your money in. And actually, there's some key things that you can find out that stops you from, from getting rugged and, and losing your money. So look before you ape. I mean, it it's, sounds very obvious but you should really have a good look at this stuff before you put money in um what is quite common is you know people say this new contracts out the earlier you get in the better uh, creates this fear of missing out process and then people start just just putting money into stuff before without really understanding what it is and that is a that is the number one way to lose money um you've got to go and have a look at it first don't worry about if you're trying to hit contracts just as they're listing you, you're you're basically um on borrowed time anyway so um slow down take your time look for the project um again sounds really obvious but you've got to go and find a project look for humans doing stuff if there's you know 99% of rugs are just basically automated things there's there's like one human behind 500 of them um, so real humans doing stuff in Telegram groups, they're there to answering questions. Again, this is, this is in no way a guarantee that they're, they're not scammers. Um, but signs for active development. Is there something being built here? Um, or, or is it surface thin? And communities, you can't fork communities, you can't pretend communities. If there's real people talking in a group and they're not just asking when the, the, the token's going to go up in value... It, it, it's likely that there's something a little bit more real there. So the first, first sort of port of call is to, is there anything actually there? 
99% of rug pulls are just, they're just very, very surface thin and you can start to spot them very quickly. So the other thing is look for actual product. Now this is when, um, unfortunately it's a paradigm in the space for people to uh, essentially, you know, release a white paper, say they're gonna build stuff and it can take years to come. This rarely happens. Um, if if they're saying it's going to come and it's not not coming yet and they're missing deadlines, it's probably nothing there at all. Um, so that's what we call vaporware when it's just pretend software. It's a website. It's a white paper at best these days, um, and you know really there's nothing there. Um, the next level after that, okay, there is something. There's something you can use. There's contracts there. But is it just forked stuff? Is it just cut and paste code from other projects? You can fork any number of the open source software projects in an afternoon. It, it's, it's not difficult at all. And this, this just means that you, know, you can actually have some usable software, something that you can put tokens in, something you can stake in, some liquidity mining contracts. Maybe even a money market. It's it, you can set them all up in an afternoon. So if it's a fork, if there's nothing new happening. It's likely that it's going to be a scam. So um, forks do happen, and you know, but there's least got to be modifications to the, that software that is interesting and novel. Otherwise, it's worthless. So what you're looking for is how much work has gone into the actual product. Is there people building? Is there a team? Uh, is there commits on GitHub? Is, you know, is there code being pushed? How much actual work is happening? Um, people who are putting, you know, working hard aren't scammers. Um, might still go wrong and it might not be a good idea, but you're looking for people doing real stuff and it's quite hard to fake. Um, look for accountability, you know, is there someone who's a real human um, that is going to be, you know, in trouble if they run off with all your money? You know, at some point, you know, if, if you're going to run off with people's money, you're going to have to run to India and fake your own death or something. No one wants to do that. So, you know, who's around um, that it, it is going to face the music if things go wrong? Um, and then, you know, are they thinking accountably? Are, are they taking risks that they shouldn't be doing? Now, this is an interesting topic in the space around, you know, can you trust anonymous developers? In some cases, you can. Uh, some of the very, very best developers in the space remain anonymous. Satoshi was anonymous. Um, a lot of the devs at Yearn Finance, for example, are anonymous. And, you know, that's very much in values of the space. But it is quite rare um, anonymous developers have reputations to lose as well. Um, and, you know, but really, if there's no accountability, if this person can disappear off the face of the planet, they don't have to run off, the risk is a lot higher. Um, so again, similarly, audits. Now, audits do not mean that the code cannot be exploited. It reduces the risk a little bit. But again, there's lots of shoddy auditing firms out there that are just, you know, they're, they're just as much of a scammer as, as the rest of, the, uh, of the, the scammers themselves. Audits need to be from a reputable company. Um, otherwise, they're just not worth the paper they're written on. Um, transparency. So how transparent is the project being? Is it open source? Can you go and look at the contracts? This is how you tell if they're lazy forks. Um, is there a white paper? Increasingly rare these days, but you know these things take time to produce. They they have to have novel ideas in. Um, I saw a project the other day that was almost in a kind of postmodern sense, saying no one does white papers anymore. They just got hacked and lost several million dollars. So a white paper does lend legitimacy. It means that you can see the thought processes of the project. You can see if it's interesting. And honestly, that's the easiest way. I can read a white paper and see, is this interesting or is it not? If it's not, then you don't put any money in. Is there documentation? Can you? Is there effort to help people understand code? Uh, are, are people actually making it easy for people to come in and, and do due diligence? 
Um, unbelievably, people put money into things without even websites these days. Um, so yeah, I, I can't believe I'm saying that, but yes, does it have a website? Um, are they doxxed? Are they anonymous? It's quite easy to just put fake profile pictures. You know, those these person do not exist things. You can generate a human face very easily. Um, so is there a way to understand the identities of these people, even if they're anonymous? And yeah, the, the thing that, that, you know, there's other people, you know, building big narratives around, are there management keys? Uh, there's typically always going to be management keys in early stage DeFi projects. Um, they are a risk. And are the team being transparent about it? Um, you know, is there a process? Is there, there, there ideas for how are we going to get rid of them? Are they going to transition to the DAO at some point? But really, yeah, there's, there's they are a risk, but they're there in almost every project in DeFi. There is no such thing as a kind of risk-free project. Um, I could do an entire video on this and probably will do it at a later date. Um, but understand the token economics. Now, this is something that is probably where you should spend quite a lot of your time really understanding. You, this is how, how you get really good at doing your own research is that you can start to look at the way the token is designed and how much that is likely to expose you to being not just rug pulled, but over time, is, is the project likely to be successful? 99% of that comes down to, is the token viable? Does the token do something? So, you know, at a very high level, you wanna be looking what the token supply is. If it's a quadrillion tokens. If it's one of these kind of dog tokens with you know 15 zeros on the end, that's designed to make it hard for you to understand. It's designed to make it difficult for you to pass what a token is, what a single token value is. Um, so it's designed to manipulate, designed to, to make it difficult to understand. That's a big red flag. So watch out for tokens with crazy high token supplies. Um, Look for distribution. So you're normally going to find one of these pie charts somewhere. And this is like, am I going to hold this long term? If 90% of the tokens are held by insiders, pre-sales, funds, um, you know, the team, it sometimes hold 30, 40%. But, you know, there might be a team and a foundation allocation and an early investor foundation. Um and it means that it's kind of you versus the insiders. So the tokens sold before launch, before launch and the tokens sold after that bore out of the market. That's the balance you want to see. If the balance is heavily, heavily weighted towards those who bought tokens at crazy discounts and beforehand, they control the market. It means the token for them can still go down 70% and they're still up 100x. Um, whereas you buying out of the market, you're down 70% and there's just a huge asymmetry in the market. Uh, it means they can sell far later than you, they can hold far longer than you and, and they control the market. The other thing you can do is go and look at the token holders. Um, and I'll show you an example of where you can do that on Etherscan in a minute. And again, if there is a small number of wallets holding a huge amount of the token supply and it's it doesn't need to be a huge amount relative to the whole pie. Uh, so they can hold even five to 10% and that's enough to take all the liquidity out of the Uniswap pools. Um, is there vesting? Um, so you wanna be looking for um, the top holders uh, being smart contracts. And that is an indicator that there's, there's tokens locked away, that they're not accessible to the team or anyone. And that, that's what you want to be looking. The, the most important thing for project success is, is that utility in the token? Does the token actually do something? Do you need it to engage with the system? Um, if it's just a simple hold this and you can use snapshot or something like that, it's very, very thin utility case. Does the, utility, does the token actually need to be there in the system? If not, it's typically a thin facade for at least a badly thought out project, but maybe something more nefarious. But what you're really looking for is who can end the game. So is there a token holder that if they sold, it's all over? Now, a good example of this is the Shiba Inu token where they actually intentionally gave 
um, Vitalik half of the token supply. That meant Vitalik, if he wanted to, could have ended the game. Um, he could have taken every single penny of value out of that system. He only took a little bit in the end, but you know, give that choice to someone else. But that is present in nearly all of those tokens. Um, if there's someone, a person or a small number of people who can end the game, you do not want to be holding the token. So this is an example of, you know, you can go into Etherscan and click holders and you're looking for this. So in this, this case, this project has claimed to burned a lot of the tokens, about 30, 40% of the tokens. That's not necessarily the case. Tokens can sit in burn addresses and they can be, they can, they can again be sent again, um, which I think is the case in the Safe Moon contract. Uh, and then you've got this kind of handful of big, big token, um, these other colored bits. So the other accounts is generally the small token holders, the crowds. And then these big slices here, they can all be the same person. Just because they're in different slices does not mean that one person doesn't control them. And that means it's a rug pull waiting to happen. Um, and, you know, this idea of we're burning tokens, again, it's just a manipulation thing. Unless there's real proof of burn out of the market, um, that is that there's there's liquid circulating supply tokens being burnt. Burns are absolutely meaningless. Do not be fooled by that scam. So these are a kind of, you know, that's a good way to do some basic due diligence. And the other is, you know, the way that you interact with the market. Trade, don't gamble. So you want to be thinking, what tokens do I want to hold? You want to build yourself an investment thesis. Manage your risk. And what this basically means is, is that if you put all of your money into a token or even a number of tokens, and the, the, the whole market can change, as we've just seen. So you, you should never be completely exposed. Um, your whole portfolio should not be risk on. You should, you should have some tokens or even good, a good percentage of your, your tradable portfolio in stable coins. Um, we tend to hit the end of bull markets when everyone is all in, and that's when things go wrong. So be the person that stays alive, stay in the game, don't go all in. Um, and really, you can see when things are, you know, going really, really crazy when, you know, everyone is convinced that everyone is going to make infinite money. That's when it's, it's time to sell. And normally, if, if you have found a legitimate project, if you found one that you've done your research on, you think this is great. Um, and then, you know, typically they aren't playing the same scammy games that some of the, the, the more overt um, nefarious projects do. So that's when it's a good time to buy. It's a legit project. There's people working. There's active development. There's products. And the token price is low. The opposite is true. Um, the other key thing is valuation. So um, there's two different things. So market cap is the amount the current token price times the circulating supply, and then there's fully diluted valuation. The latter is actually much more sensible because it's quite a common scheme to have a very thin amount of the token tradable. So it's trading at, say, 50 cents, um, but there's only 3% of the token supply that's actually liquid. That creates a crazy high valuation, and that means the only way is down. So look for relative pricing. So what's what are similar projects? What are their fully diluted valuations? If the project is you know got billion dollar valuation, and there's similar projects that are building real stuff that have a lower valuation, that's a sign that the token's going to dump. Um, Vaporware, if they're saying that there's something coming and it's been six months and there's nothing coming, it's Vaporware and Vapor is worth zero. So if you're holding tokens that don't have anything real yet and don't see any sign of doing it, it's a bad sign. Get out. Um, also, these, these meme tokens, fine. They, they, they pump, they go crazy high, but they go down just as quick. So yeah. Crazy high market cap valuations, but 50 lines of code that, you know, that anyone could have done in an afternoon, that's a recipe for disaster. And 
they're, they're not going to stay with value for much longer. Um, again, the other thing that you should really not do is what, what I could go, go close to the shitcoin source. People like to buy tokens on Genesis Day, the day they've come out, because that's when the most uh, upside is had, but mainly due to market manipulation, mainly due to pump and dump games. And the risk is just too high. Um, there's something like 4,000 rug pulls a day on, on Binance Smart Chain and Polygon, just thousands and thousands of these things, all run by a small number of people. The only way that you lose money with that is if you buy them. Don't buy them. Stay away from the shitcoin source. Let the market play out a little bit. You'll find out if it's a pump and dump. You'll find out if there's real stuff. Um, if you're trying to buy stuff on lift, listing day for a quick flip, you're gambling. You're not trading. Um, fair enough if you want to do that. Make sure you manage your risk. Don't go all in ever. Um, but yeah, you understand that that's how you lose and eventually everyone does playing that game. So stay away tokens from listing unless you're making a long-term bet. Um, so the chances of being rugged increase absolutely exponentially the, the, the newer the token. So the Lindy effect is a real thing. The longer it's been around, the longer the belief is built, the longer more believers there are, the more holders there are, the more likely it is to be. A legitimate token. This is a skill and you will get better at this over time but the only way you get better at it is by actively reading, by learning, um, spotting some of the consistent repeated things you know that there's like you know scammers aren't that innovative they reuse the same ideas you start to see the same things again so hey we've burnt half of the token supply hey liquidity's locked guys these are all kind of classic uh, red flags. Uh, does it sound too good to be true? I mean, you know, is it called Safe Moon? That is a number one red flag. And yes, all right, it's gone up hugely in value, but it could go down hugely in value. And certainly, all of the clones that have come after it, the it's, Safe Moon is a clone of another project. And then there's clones of clones of clones. All of those are not worth holding. You shouldn't hold any of them. Um, are there just like empty promises of bright futures? Is there barely any technical details? These are all signs of a token that is soon to go to zero. Um, the other thing to note is that, yes, don't, don't judge the successes that you might have had on bull market conditions. We're not in a clear bull market at the moment. Things might turn around. But certainly in these kind of choppy crab market conditions, um, you want to be looking at only at tokens that are legitimate. So now doing your own research is super, super important. And yes, DGENs win in bull markets, but that's because in bull markets, everything goes up. So the, the, the kind of market beta, the whole market moves up and it's kind of like, you know, rising tribe brings the ships up. So... Other than that, make sure you find legitimate tokens. Do not overtrade. Um, you want to be thinking long term. Build that investment thesis. Think on three to five year time horizons. Um, and and these are the tokens that you should only buy stuff that you're willing to hold for three to five years, um, or at least at least on kind of like over a six month time period. Don't don't overtrade. That's the way that you get chop type chopped up by market conditions. Um, finally, so never overextend yourself. Um, no amount of research can bring real assurances in, in crypto. The, you know, I've held tokens I was very convinced were good. I've all gone down 99.9%. Um, you, you should basically presume that anything that you buy is going to go to zero. Um, so this is extreme risk on... Uh, investment activity, um, you know, it's it, you should really shouldn't be exposing yourself to risk that you can't afford. Make sure you're sorted. No amount of research can take the risk out of crypto. Okay, so none of that was investment advice. It was 
guidance for you to lead your own activity. It's do your own research because you are responsible for looking after yourself in the crypto market. Um, so read, learn, be careful, um, and stick around and hang out with us at finance.vote and we'll help you try and understand the crypto market more and you can work with us in a DAO to understand these things. And later on today, uh, we'll be going through any examples of tokens you want to look at and we'll be applying this strategy to them to see if those tokens are any good. Okay, thanks very much. That's all for now.